Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here for my regular Monday This and That video. And if you're new, these are just a weekly vlog that I do covering all kinds of different topics. So please don't be discouraged or frustrated when you hear me jump from topic to topic because that's what these videos are. If you want more detailed single topic videos, if there's anything I'm talking about that I already have videos on, I will be linking to those in the description box down below. Don't forget to click on either show more right down here below my channel name or on that little gray arrow over here on this side if you are on a smart device. So let's get started on the topics of today. Now I have a lot to talk about but before I get into these things over here the first thing I want to mention is in regards to the video that came out this last week called why should we prepare if the rapture is going to save us? Well, unfortunately, though I did get a lot of great feedback, I could tell the people that actually watched the video and got the point and those that didn't watch the video and only wanted to come in and start a fight. So I want to specify, if you haven't seen it yet because you assumed you knew what it was about, please go watch it so you can understand what it was about. It had nothing to do with anyone's view or belief about a rapture, when it's going to happen, or if it's even real. And I didn't even share my beliefs, so if I'm not sharing what I believe, how am I teaching a false doctrine? Because I didn't even share my thoughts on it, which have changed even more recently as I dug deeper into scripture, but I'm just going to leave it at that. I do not want another debate started down here because that's not what the previous video was about nor was is that what this one is about and I won't do debates like that and here's why because I notice a lot of believers whether they call themselves Christian Hebrew roots whatever it is quite a few of them will come in and find a reason to argue and debate and be mean to each other and then the non-believers see that and that's how they view all of us when you guys start biting at each other over doctrine that our salvation is not dependent upon our salvation is only dependent on Jesus not whether or not we wear long skirts or pants as women not whether or not we celebrate Christmas and whether or not we believe in the rapture at all or when it's supposed to happen. So it's one thing to kindly talk about these things and share your views, but to get in there and start bad-mouthing people, calling them names, calling them stupid is absolutely uncalled for. And I had people do that without even listening to the video. If you expect me to respect the time that you put into typing up these debates, then please respect mine by actually watching a video first and then sharing what you think about it. Now let's get on to the other topics I'm excited about talking about. So um, those of you who know that have been following me for a while know I've talked about Coco Stripes Magda. She's a small U.S. based business that sells the silicone bags and all kinds of reusable items to help us get away from plastic, especially throwaway plastic. And one of the things she had on her store were these little uh, reusable sandwich slash snack bags that I thought I'd go ahead and buy even though I knew I could make them myself I always get a little intimidated by zippers so I bought two sets one for Jackson and one for Jace is my grandson that's yet to be born and then took a good look at him and realized this zipper is totally I can do this I can do this but then what I did not knowing any better is I bought zipper tape where you actually have to put the zipper head on so then I had to learn that bag easy putting the zipper on the bag easy putting the zipper head on the zipper was a totally new experience for me and at first I thought I was never gonna get it and then finally I got it and it's a piece of cake one of these days I should do a video on it but so with that in mind I ended up buying some fabric to make some of my own so these I made uh, bigger than the smallest one here but the same shape and I'm actually selling some on my store but I bought the fabric fabric mostly so I can make more for my grandkids when they come along but I have a lot so I'm selling my excess on the store right now in packs of two and I probably unless people really ask for more once I run out I probably won't be making more but I have this one with the racing trucks on it because Jackson loves anything truck related and then I have this beach theme one I thought was pretty cute. So what this is is a waterproof PUL or polyurethane laminated fabric. It's often what's used for making bibs and diaper covers or even diapers and you actually sew that right onto the whole diaper and that's 
what keeps it waterproof and you can get rid of those dumb plastic pants that never last. I mean, when I did clock diapers with my kids, those plastic pants, they used to be made out of nylon and they would last forever. But when my kids were babies, they were plastic and then you wash them a few times and then they start cracking. I wish I would have had this back when my kids were babies. But anyway, so I got, I'm getting a bunch of these made up. I still have, uh, I still have several more to make. So if you're interested in looking at those for a sandwich bag, either for yourself or for your kids, um, they're not going to keep things totally fresh forever, but they will help. But it'd be something you can actually put a sandwich in and not have to use plastic Ziploc bags. You just wash them up and reuse them. You can stick them in your dishwasher on the top shelf or wash them out by hand just like you would a Ziploc bag. Super easy and they'll last much longer. And then having a zipper like this, you can be more dependent upon. I like that better. <laughs> Anyway, it was a fun project to try to fi to figure out that zipper and then just get a bunch of them made up and do it myself. But anyway, let's go on to some of the other topics. One of the other things I wanted to mention was last week's this and that video, I was talking about getting started on the grape wine. And I'll show you a picture of how it looks day one. And it's very olive green. It's kind of ugly, kind of a brownish green, not very pretty. But one thing that's really cool about like grape wine in particular is when you're making it out of the green grapes is that it will start out an ugly color but you know it takes a week for it to turn this beautiful golden color right here and then I also started with the pulp most of the pulp the rest I threw out to the chickens I started two jars of grape vinegar so that's been doing really well right there if you're interested in winemaking, I have a whole playlist on how to make wine. Four of the videos in that series are just on the process of winemaking in general. Plus, I have videos on other types of wine like the, like the rhubarb margarita wine, how to make mead, flavored mead in particular, and also even a video on the many uses for homemade wine, even if you don't drink, because that is why I always have wine going because I have many uses for it, especially in cooking. It's so great to add to sautés, to make extracts with, and so on. So please go check those videos out. And then of course, I have a whole series also on vinegar making. And what I'll do is actually link to my most recent vinegar making video because through the years since I started my channel I've updated a few things in how I make my vinegar so the most recent one is a little more accurate so I'll link to that if you're new to vinegar making and how easy it is and yes you can use anything to make vinegar it's super easy okay moving on I'm gonna do just a little bit of talk on the garden today next this and that next week I'll try to do a little more coverage on that but the two main things I wanted to mention are the nettles so I've got I've been harvesting my nettle. It's just coming in like crazy. One thing I love about nettle is the first herb slash vegetable to start coming in and I can start harvesting like crazy. This year I'm not even going to worry about trying to let it go to seed because for some reason the past two years I have not been able to get a good mature seed from it and I think it has something to do with our weird summer weather that we've been having. But this time of year it just grows like crazy. So. I'm dehydrating up a bunch and I almost have a completely full quart jar right here. I can pack it down a little bit more with my tamper and put some more in. I'm going to be dehydrating more and I've been using it right away as a side vegetable to go with any meals that we have. I also like to add it into meals, soups and so on, just using it fresh. Now here are a few examples in pictures. One is just a sauteed, just to saute it in butter and homemade wine or you can use coconut oil and whatever spices you want. Usually I'll add onion and garlic and then sometimes I'll do a full mixed vegetable like I did last night for dinner with peppers, mushrooms, the garlic, the onion, and some snow peas and that's good. I love that. It's just that is one of my favorite dishes. I could eat that by itself. And then my seedlings are coming along great. My tomatoes, you know, I grow them in a cluster I'm going to need to get them transplanted out to the greenhouse into bigger pots soon. Now, if you're interested in the whole process of tomatoes and how I, how I save the seeds, then start the seeds, then grow them, and then transplant it, I use the easiest method. This is something I've been working on for years. I don't use any grow lights, no added heat. I just grow them in a south-facing window and get them started, move them to the greenhouse. I'll link to that video down below I think I did last year on growing tomatoes from seeds that I saved from the previous year 
to transplanting into the greenhouse. And then one more garden related thing I wasn't even going to talk about, but I just got an email from Greenstock that they are having a sale 25% off starting, I think, March 16th. It starts and it's 25% off, and I think if I understand correctly, it's any of their green items, but you might want to double check. I should have looked closer, but one thing I was really thrilled about to see that they now have got, they got rid of that kind of lime green color. Now they're going with a much darker green called evergreen, which I like much better. Unfortunately, they don't have the dark brown like I have, but if I was to, if I do buy another one, I'm thinking about it, I'm going to get that evergreen because I love, I love green. But anyway, I just wanted to throw that out there. So I'll have that link down below to the green stock so you can check that out and get 25% off your order if you're interested in buying it. If you can't afford it, there's other things you can do to make your container garden, garden more affordable and try to make the most of your space. I think last year I did a video on that, that if I can find it, I'll link to it in the description box down below. That's if I, I can find it. I can't remember what it was called and it was sometime early in the growing season of last year. And then another thing I wanted to bring up is not, I know not everyone likes meatloaf. I didn't like meatloaf when I was a kid, but I love it now. But one of the things I like about making meatloaf is how you can change the flavor of it and give it any kind of flair you want to. A lot of times I'll just do a basic meatloaf with maybe a little sage and some thyme in there for the flavor. And then sometimes I'll make it, I'll put in Italian type seasoning and even make a sauce to put over the top. I'll just make my basic Italian sauce, which I have a recipe on that out. But last night I decided to go with more of a Mexican flair. So I added cumin and chili powder to it and some paprika. Plus I used some of my homegrown homemade tomato flakes and just put that right into the meatloaf. It had a real nice flavor to it. It had exactly the flavor I was looking for. And hopefully I can get all this in here without this video being too long. But I wanted to mention real quick about freezing grains that a couple years ago, yes, I started freezing my grains because suddenly, out of the blue, even though I've been saving grains and flowers for years, I had some bags of grain. It was always in the spelt for some reason. Get weevils in it. And then I started to understand how weevils get in there. It's not that they get into the grains after you get them in there is that they were already present inside the individual grains, the larva. And so once I f learned that, I started freezing the grains first. I usually freeze them for about one week minimum, but I like to leave them in there for at least a couple weeks, especially if they're the bigger the bag, because I get at least 25 to 50 pound bags at a time. Then after that, I pull them out of the freezer. I'll put a cloth over them as you can see in this photo right here and I usually keep them fairly close to the wood stove and then for about a week I'll go stir that up and just the cloth is to prevent anything from you know dust and ashes and stuff from falling into the grains but now I'll pull that off stir it up with my hands to make sure everything gets fully dried out in there because I always get concerned about freezing things and immediately packaging it up because I worry about moisture being in there that can then cause it to mold and rot so that's why I make sure it's fully dry before I put it away in a bucket. And I don't do anything special with it. I, you can, if I, I know I'm gonna put it up for a long, long term, I'll seal it into a Mylar bag, pushing as much air as, out as I can. I don't use oxygen absorbers anymore. I think they're a complete waste of money, for me anyway, not for everyone else. And then I just seal up the bucket. I used to never even do that and I would have grains and flowers last for years in a bucket without any kind of special uh, storage just in a bucket with a tight fitting lid that's about it I saw brown rice that's at least 15 years old I'm still working through very slowly because we don't eat a lot of it and I didn't do anything special with that no mylar bag no oxygen absorbers nothing like that so anyway I you know when it comes to my grains no I don't vacuum seal everything especially if I'm going to be working right through it and just the freezing beforehand that's it that will kill any larva that may be present inside the grains and then it's fine. And I know that might gross people out knowing you might actually have weevil larva in your grains, but that's just the way it is. And it, they, it doesn't hurt you. Even if they hatch out and you've got weevils in there, they still won't hurt you. In a pinch, that's just more protein. But the bags I have had that got infested, 
I just went ahead and gave them to the chickens and they got, they loved it. They got the weevils and the grains. I buy grains for them anyway and make a scratch out of it so it was no big deal and it was no waste. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and be watching for next week's This and That where I plan on going into more depth about what's happening in the garden and the latest updates there. All right, well, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.